I'm Ty Burnett. Ty Burnett. I'm uh, Van Burnett, Ty's younger brother. And I'm Blake Worth, Ty and Van Burnett's friend. Yeah, and pretty much we are here in the living room of um, where we created the film, We're Live. Um, we no longer live here now, but we are uh, back to uh, reminisce and reminisce on a handful of shots in the movie We're Live. All right, here we go. There we go. Pick one. Oh. Oh, okay. This shot was from the opening. Yeah, what you're looking at here is the uh, the opening sequence of, of the film where we're kind of getting people into the world of this podcast that we've created. Yeah. The DTF podcast, Don Lee Taggart film podcast. It's really uh, kind of a um, Friday after work type of podcast where these guys are clinging on to their love for movies as, uh, you know, they're, they're in their 30s. And, um, you know, part of the wardrobe choice here is the landmark crew neck sweatshirt. And Blake, I don't know if you want to hit on kind of. Well, I, I actually posted today in the We're Live movie page that um, we, because of our lack of budget, um, we had to wear our own clothes for the movie. Um, and that's just yeah. Van's sweatshirt is all that is. That is, um, it is. You want to tell me what's up? Lanzani. Well, a couple of things. Fun fact about this sweatshirt is it's the one article of clothing that has been in each one of the Neckbone Pictures movies. Um, and part of that, as Blake mentioned, is uh, overall budget. But another part is our love for, for Landmark. We all work out there. I love playing racquetball there. Do you, you, still, first, you still work out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting into the wedding weight season. But, uh, you know, our first film we did was... <laughs> I don't know was Hinder, and it was a racquetball movie, actually, that we shot at Landmark, but it got it got the Landmark faithful. We, we premiered there, and then this sweatshirt was just sort of made it through. Yeah, behind box number two. Door number two. Oh, my God. There it is. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe the overall best reception for, afterwards when we were talking to everybody, I think more people talked about this moment being their favorite or, like, the funniest of the film. Yeah. Which I didn't think it would be, because I, I thought it was a little too like slapstick or like in your face, but got a good reception. There's also a late addition uh, to the movie. It was one of the uh, yeah. last scenes yeah. we kind of wrote in, and uh, again, a scene like the dog chase could probably go without it, but I mean, you got to throw it in there. Yeah, so. need yeah, that this, classic neck bone. Yeah, comedy. Yeah, and I mean this one right here. I think uh, it kind of shows the. The outrageousness of of Blake's character in a lot of ways, which um, it does a really good job of kind of setting up the uh, ever growing annoyance and, and kind of tension with these two characters. Because while this is hilarious on screen, it's also the introduction for the entire film of these two characters kind of not agreeing or not being on the same page mm -hmm. or being frustrated with one another. So um, up until this moment in the movie. Uh, Blake's character and my character in lockstep, and then this movie kind of introduces the very earliest seed of tension and of uh, annoyance. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's definitely one of the main plots in the film, too. I mean, people ask us, you know, what's your movie about? And it's kind of a tough one to explain without giving away certain plot details. But, you know, at the outset, it's about a podcast that people are trying to, to make, uh, you know, popular and well-known. But it's also about following your dreams and, and really the, the one that lies beneath it all probably right. is the theme of friendship and, and kind of growing up into your 30s with conflicting goals and, and trying to support your friends but still walking your own path. Right. So, Van, actually, yeah. Van actually was Okay. No. Number three, number three. Oh, yeah. This scene, oh, my gosh. Mr. Coffee. What to say about this scene? Well, this was, I don't know if this is from the first, second, or third time that we, <laughs> we shot, shot it because we shot this cold. thing. We shot it three times. We wanted it to have that like true winter feel because it starts out in the podcast and then cuts from the podcast world straight into real life. And we wanted to kind of like early on set the tone that this is like a winter film. So we were like, you know, we can't really shoot this one in summer. So we shot it twice <laughs> that first winter. Both times it was probably about 15 to 20 degrees. And both times, either we ran out of batteries or the SD cards were not functioning properly or the shots were out of focus or the acting wasn't where we wanted it to be. And all of a sudden, by the time we're figuring that out, it's April or May and we're like, yeah. so Van actually tried to edit this thing for 
I mean, he, he put a nice Frankenstein piece of like horrible footage and he made it good enough. And then when we got to the point where we were getting close to the next winter of shooting and we were just like, we just have to shoot this over. It's not again. We had, we had, we had, we just knew, yeah. we knew we had to shoot this one over again. Yeah. I think we got it to where we wanted. And to that, be. and that's so that's how their uncle, um, that's their mom's twin brother. Incredible yeah. sport, like time and time again was willing to yeah. like redo it. As was everybody. There were multiple reshoots in this movie, and I mean everybody was just Always. extremely like yeah. willing to help and yeah. do it again. Patient with us. So yep. Was, so pal, my uncle in real life plays my dad in the movie. Um, so this is you know, a, a scene early on that we wanted to ground the film. And, and there's one line in the actual movie that's like, you know, we know we like to make you laugh. We like to have fun, but this is serious. And that to us is kind of like uh, the film and as a it's whole. a film in a nutshell, yeah. because up until this film, we did stuff to make people laugh and we did stuff to goof around. But this was the first project that we really said, this is serious. And yeah. this scene kind of introduces that with pain. Um, and not as much in a, um, you know, traumatic or, or sad way, but just kind of an acceptance that life's not always perfect and you have to deal with what life hands you. Yeah. Um, and one cool thing about this set as well is um, we're holding Mr. Donut Cups, which yes. is, you know, a coffee shop that's, that's out of business. But the fun part about this is that my Uncle Pow actually owned the Mr. Donuts right up the street here. Unless, so. He, he asked us because he's all about, you know, props and what he can do as an actor to get into character. And he said, yeah, I brought some uh, Mr. Donut cups. Would you guys want to use those? And we looked at each other. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. you know there's one Mr. Donut left. Godfrey, right? Illinois. Godfrey, I have passed Illinois. through. It's because it's, yeah. it's on my route for work. And I passed by it and I couldn't believe my eyes because, like, we had so much memorabilia growing <laughs> up in this place. And now it's just like it just vanished into thin air. That was so cool seeing that. I, stand I gotta go there and get some memorabilia. Mr. Donuts, wow. the coffee shop that has one location. One left. left. One left. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to grab some for Pal. <clears throat> so yeah, that's that's pretty much this scene. It was miserable shoot. <clears throat> oh my gosh! What? what a shoot! Yeah, <laughs> this is so fun. So we, so the dog Poe. Yeah, yeah. This was uh, my girlfriend Jenna's dog, who <clears throat> was this dog loves me. Um, <laughs> so no matter where I'm at, he will chase me. It's just a matter of like, so Jenna was actually around the corner holding him and she got the signal to let him go. And, and we, me, yeah, so, Van was so driving. Van, Van was driving his van and Ty was in the back with the hatch up, like shooting. And I was running at the, at the van. And I believe we only shot it once because he was actually so excited and fired up. He was biting my head. We did, yeah, we shot it once. Yeah, it was like one take because I think if we would have done it again, he was going for my throat out of love. But he was fired up. He was like, there, he bit my head. I actually had to like fend him off for real. So yeah, I attributed it to method acting. But uh, Poe completely stole the show. He did see, like we had no idea what to expect. We just knew he would chase Blake, and we kind of just expected Blake to run off camera from that like glide shot right there and just like cut the scene. But then we're like, well, let's get a couple like still shots of Blake rolling in the yard and see if Poe will like do what looks like an attack. And he literally jumped on top of you, grabbed your pant leg as yeah. you like crawled off screen. It was yeah. perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. That was, that was great. Very fun. Uh, like production choreography on this one because Ty's sitting in the trunk. I got the window rolled down. Blake's up there. We got Poe on a leash and it's like, all right, go! And we just, you know, keep it slow and steady. It's just this was a uh, far cry from Michael Bay. Yeah, studio yeah. sets going so, on with this one, but like, yeah, it, it seemed to work. And I mean, it's it's got to be said too. I mean, Post stole the show, but it was hilarious even editing this, where Blake's like losing different, you know, pieces of his his male costume. He's like looking over, but running away from this dog. And I think one thing that we use throughout the movie is this kind of, uh, you know beautiful disaster where on the edit we pair these symphony beethoven or mozart and we kind of put it with a, an awful situation and kind of contrast it as here's this beautiful demise of the life as these people knew it and it mm -hmm. seemed to work <laughs> another note is this is this was one of the few shoots we actually did on our lunch break since we all have full-time jobs we had to find time when we could so this was on a lunch break i remember van came straight from work mm -hmm. ty did um, we all met in this neighborhood and shot it in like 20 minutes and then back to work. But yeah, that's we right. had to do that a lot in order to make this work, you know, so.
Yeah. Number five. The Fog Shop. You drive. Um, this was another one, too, where Blake was saying where we had to, like, do stuff during lunch. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this day we just kind of woke up and realized, like. Because of the fog. Yes. Yeah, like, I can't work. remember if I took the day off of work in general, but, like, we were all just kind of, like, we have to go shoot. Like, we got to get outside because this is so different than anything else in our film. And then we start thinking to ourselves kind of on the fly. We're like, okay, let's look at the script. What can we do in this weather? Yeah. How can we make this dramatic setting fit a dramatic part of the film? So we're like, okay, let's, the, you know, everything's hitting the fan right now. How about them starting to bounce back off the trampoline and getting back towards like a little bit of success? So what we're looking at here is uh, Grandview Drive, which everyone who's from Peoria or knows Peoria knows Grandview Drive and how beautiful it is. Um, like Ty said, we woke up. This was a super foggy morning. We knew we needed a, a really like filmic scene. So this one, we scrolled through the Rolodex and found it and we set up another kind of similar uh, glide cam. Um, back of the minivan. Back of the minivan yep. driving glide cam. Um, but yeah, the weather was incredible. And I think just what's cool about this stage of the film is really a lot of the plot elements are kind of coming to a head and you're not sure uh, how characters feel or where things are going to go from here. So it was cool that this weather kind of matched up with this point in the plot where, you know, you're kind of looking for clarity or you're kind of in a dramatic uh, crossroads. And then here's this foggy day on Grandview where Pete's trying to clear his head and kind of get over a lot of hardships by by running and then some big things kind of happen that follow with this scene. He gave us some some vouchers and threw a, a new hoodie at me and he said, hey, we've seen this old one enough from, from 20 years back. We appreciate it, but here's some new threads. Put some new gear yeah. yeah. So we appreciate that. And everybody at Landmark, especially the uh, people who help us with the movie show. So he so. did, he gave you the sweatshirt? Yeah, he did. So I actually purchased one the next day. For eighteen dollars. Yeah. You, you got it. Yeah. Well, it's important. It's down. important. Cool. To support, <laughs> it's important to support local business, and I thought that's what we're all about. Yeah. Sure. No, sure. I'll send you a Venmo on that one.